When I look out at the ocean, I can't help but think about the future. What this will be 20, 50, 100 years from now. The aquaculture business has always been a passion of mine. And I knew if I wanted to change this business, I needed to start my own backyard. So this is King Seafood. This is one of the very, very few docks that there are on the east coast of Florida. It's a dying breed. There's hardly any left. So what kind of fish they got here for you today? I don't know. We'll find out. When we do fish here, especially in Florida, it's actually kind of hard to get Florida fish. Um, which is kind of surprising. We go to Publix and there's literally no Florida fish anywhere. Um, so supporting local is very important. Like our menu is probably 90% sustainable seafood and probably about that much in Florida fish as well. You know, where we live and, and just the, the, the abundance, um, you know, of, of just great seafood that we have, um, Kelly has been a big part of, of kind of that love affair with, with great seafood. So if I order from a, a big company, you know, I don't know where that fish has been, I don't know anything about it. Whereas with him, he'll tell me it's his buddy's boat, the name of the boat, like the Intrepido, and it's like came out of Bio the Battery. And you know, it's from here, and this is like where it's from, these are the names of the guys, the captains. This is why it's important, this is the water it came from. Uh, you know, we see stuff that you're not gonna find anywhere else, and he might only have 30 pounds of it. So much about fish is how well it's taken care of. Are they killed immediately? Are they iced immediately? I mean, this thing is so firm. It's just so beautiful. Beautiful gills. So we got some local divers when the water's clear and they'll go out and they'll hand spear them. They don't move fast, so they give them headshots. But every, there's a spine here on the tail, there's a spine down here, spines all across the top. The spines up there, their faces are full of spines. Your hands tingle <laughs> after handling them. Keep them in a salt brine, they put them instantly in there, really firms up the meat. You actually don't want to fillet them right away. It's the, the meat sticks to the bones. Let them brine in overnight. It actually comes from a ancient Japanese way of, uh, of preparing the fish. The saltiness, you match it pretty much the same as the ocean, 32 parts per thousand. And what it does is it, it draws out any residual water within the meat. We have flounders from Carolina or dragnet caught, which, you know, takes everything else up off the bottom, messes up the bottom. And these are gone out individually, one by one, speared, it's almost an ikejime where it's a head shot, they die instantly, they bleed out, leaving the meat pristine and, and white. Speckled sea trout. And dude, they're such a cool fish. They always have like this snaggletooth fang, Dracula fang there. These are all rod and reel caught. So literally someone went out, like I try to all the time, and rod and reeled these guys. And I've never caught one this big in my life and he caught a whole basket of them. Because he has such an incredible knowledge of the area and the fish. He's got one snaggle tooth in there.
first in, first out. The funny thing is, I remember my uh, my wife's grandfather interviewing me. What are you going to be when you you know after school? And I said, uh, well, I, I said a banker because I felt like that was the the proper thing to do. Everybody else, I'd say a shrimp farmer, and it was just a joke, you know, that I'm going to be a shrimp farmer when I grow up. I felt like like our we were the genesis of this global financial collapse. I watched Greece's economy collapse and could trace it back to the communities where we lived in Southern California. It was the most incredible time. And so not only without a job, but without an industry that I had been in, um, sent out some feelers for graduate school and not in banking anymore. Uh, but in biology, in aquaculture, <laughs> going back to my, my, hmm, maybe I do want to be a shrimp farmer when I grow up. What's up, man? Shut up! Rod and reel caught and awesome. Ooh, nice. That I was That's like... Good. Oh my gosh. That's nice. Beautiful. Yeah, I mean, usually on the menu we write like port of origin, like where it's from. So like if we get something from Pompano Beach or Port Orange or wherever, we always like to highlight that as much as possible. And then, yeah, if it's like rod and real cod, I mean, we want people to know that. Freaking awesome. It's good for the servers too, like for them to actually go and tell people like, yeah. hey, this is where we got it from. And, you know, some of these people that come in here probably have gone out to like those areas. Oh yeah, right. And probably are standing over there fishing and stuff. It's like, <laughs> yeah. this is what you could catch. I think the gator. Yeah, dude, I mean, just like, look at that thing. So nice. Gorgeous. Pristine. Ah. Oh yeah. Isn't that beautiful, the, the color on those? It almost oh. looks like uh, like a really beautiful flounder. Yeah, Like right? when you cut it super thin and it's like translucent, like you just gotta love that. So that's like some of the best stuff. And one of the reasons why I really like buying from him is these are the Rosacks. So you can, like at a clear water beach, you can get all these nice mullets and you can turn that into uh, batarga. So it's a cured mullet row, and so I'll take these really nice and clean them up really good, get a lot of the blood and stuff out of there, and then uh, you cure them in salt, sugar, a lot of aromatics, and they get really hard, and you can grate them over stuff like pastas. Right now we have like an heirloom tomato salad we use these on, it's like Parmesan of the sea. Right. It's like really, really good. And so you just don't get that a lot because they'll clean and gut everything for you. So you get to use all this really nice stuff. Being able to fish with him is awesome because you're out here you're you know, you're looking at at these different areas you know the mangroves or whatever it is and not only we're talking about how cool it is you know to, to be able to fish out here but he's explaining to you well this is how this really works and I don't know Kelly's just a wealth of knowledge a fishmonger is is the connection with the best possible product um, that your area can offer. That's what a fishmonger is to me. I just figured out that what I thought was 
you know, great fish and fresh fish. I had no idea, you know. I mean, he he was uh, working directly with with the boats, and um, you know, he was so passionate about it, sending me pictures from the dock. Um, you know, saying, "Hey, this is this is what came in today. Uh, let me tell you about this fish, and let me tell you why it's so cool, and why it makes sense to to serve this versus you know what everybody else is serving." Oh, bingo. Look at that. It's like an Easter egg hunt. Yeah. An Easter egg hunt with scorpions. So this trout, we got it from King Seafood, uh, caught off of the Indian River Lagoon, water and reel caught uh, in season, uh, caught yesterday, completely fresh. The thing about trout is if it's not fresh, um, it, it, it just gets super mushy. So to be able to fillet it, you know, and, um, and it hold its shape this way, like in ancient, you know, styles of bread, like chapa bread from the Andes, you know, take the dough and they throw it straight into the into the coals, right, into the into the ashes and. We don't need any salt, we don't need anything. We just get a handful of seawater, you know, just sprinkle it over as it cooks, evaporates, and it just keeps seasoning the fish, and that's, that's, that's all you need, you know? Let the fish uh, speak for itself. That's good. Look at, the, look at the shine in it, the rainbow, see that? That's so clean. Mm. Look at that sweet. Awesome, dude. <laughs> A chef, their time is so consumed, they have no time. I'm their eyes and ears down at the dock. I, I work for them. I, Pick, I get to know them and what they like and how they prepare fish. And then when I'm down at the dock, I fight for them. I fight and, and find the best fish, what they're looking for, size, you know, quality. And that's why, you know, yeah, I can hire somebody to deliver it, but that's kind of part of being the monger, is to see their reactions when they get the fish and to see their excitement or disappointment. You know, if I drop the ball on something, I get it firsthand and it, it, it ruins my day. And I vow never ever to, to make that mistake again. Or when I deliver it, you know, they're just on cloud. Heck yeah, man, oh my gosh, this is sick. And it's just, you know, it's, it's better than any paycheck that you get, you know, to, it, it fuels you and it pushes you along. I mean, that, that's what a monger is. You're, you're their eyes and ears. I watch the documentaries, I see everything that's going on. It breaks my heart, and especially when I talk to the old fishermen, you know, and you ask, well, you know, 50 years ago, what was it like to fish out here? And they say, well, you know, you couldn't keep the grouper off the hooks. And now today, you're not, you, gosh, they covered 90 miles of bottom last week and caught one snowy grouper. And it's like, you know, what, what do we do about that? What can I do about that? And, you know, it's just grassroots, you know, just in teach the chefs about 
how cool these local fishermen are, you know, how well they take care of the product, how they don't fish with nets, they don't use these massive long lines, they take care of every fish. So, yeah, you know, when, when we take the fish from the docks and take it to them, it's, it's simple, it's basic, and, you know, it's, it's education. And that's the only way that we can really, you know, make a difference is just by small and simple means, great things happen.